Hello, everyone, and welcome to Otaku Talk. I'm your host, OD, and we have a great episode for you guys today. Today, we will be reviewing chapter 1009 of One Piece, and so much goes on in this chapter, so I'm super excited about it. Um, before I get into my nifty intro, you guys see this? You guys see this? Look at the, You like the lights? You like the video quality? You like the setup? Um, I recently moved, and so um, this isn't the final product. I'm still working on some things, but I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, how this set out came out. I'm a little blind right now. I'm not used to lights being in my face. But other than that, other than that, this is a pretty cool um, pretty cool setup, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I might I might uh, mix some things up, mix things around. Um, I like the background photos. Um, if you see that on my uh, left hand side, it's a poster, a friend of mine, um, phenomenal artist. I'll probably link him in the description made for my third degree black belt testing. So that was super awesome. And then this is a, uh, picture that my friend Cortland gave me. So I thought it would not, it would be nice to add some aesthetic to the, uh, visuals. Um, I got some really nice lights. So that's why I look like the way I am right now. I kind of feel like a blinded deer in headlights. And I'm trying to figure out how to get this stand to work. But um, yeah, that's that's that. I hope you guys like it. If you guys have any like advice or criticisms, I'd be happy to take it. So anyway, without much further ado, let's get right into it. All right, super awesome chapter, right? So as soon as we hop into it, boom, we got the nine scabbards against um, Orochi and um, Fukuro, Fukuro Kujo, right? And I don't know if it's going to become a gag at this point, but instantly, you know, Orochi talks his shit or whatever, but then instantly all the scabbards just cut off all... What appears to be all his heads. I might have to go back and check. Um, check. That's why I have my phone out. That way I know wh what exactly I'm looking at. But from what I've seen, from what I, from what it looks like, yeah, he got pretty much all his heads cut off. So the first time Kaido cut off his head, it was in his regular state. Dude survived. Now you know you think okay, all the heads are cut off. Like that's how we win, right? Because. I'm not quite sure, but um, with Hercules and the Hydra, I was pretty. I I, thought, I was under the impression that if you cut them all off at the same time, um, that's how you win. To be real with you, I totally forget how that myth went. So um, <laughs> yeah, so I think this is just gonna become a running gag with just Orochi being executed and not dying. Kind of like maybe it's just akin to be kind of like a cockroach that you can't get rid of, but um. There seems to be some intent here. I don't know if you guys remember, but last chapter I did discuss the fact that I don't think that Orochi and um, Kanjuro are just simply here to be defeated and that's that. Like, yeah, we got revenge for Odin. Like, we got revenge for uh, Wano and Kuni and all that. I, I don't think that's the case. And the reason, once again, behind that is simply the fact that they had a bad lot in life. Does that mean you get to become, you know... The Joker one bad day and fuck shit up? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is Oda likes to teach lessons. That's why I love One Piece. He like and he, he's not necessarily in your face with it, and they're very nuanced. And the thing when it comes to this particular set of like everything going on is simply the fact that Ever since he was born, he was prosecuted against people, tried to kill him. And so, honestly, you can't really blame him. You can't do it. Just be simply because, you know, like, if you were attacked every day since you were born for something that you had nothing to do, sins of the father, like, you would be bitter too. And, you know, you might not go as far as this guy, or maybe you would. We don't know we weren't in this situation. So, I do think there might be some form of turnaround, um, maybe if not for Orochi, maybe for Kanjuro, but I think Orochi's the one that needs it the absolute most. I think he's the one that needs the absolute most. So what do you guys think about that? I would like to hear that feedback. To finish up my thoughts on that, pretty much, uh, I love the part where uh, Orochi gets, you know, slashed down and uh, Fukuro Kujo basically, 
he he initially is like Orochi Sama, but like it doesn't seem like he's like you know he's that concerned. Once again, Orochi is not dead. Um, he's willing to fight. Um, I forget who he's fighting against, but was it Rizo? Yeah, it was Rizo. Who used um by the way used to be a member of the um Oniwa Banshu. I believe that's what the um name of the uh, ninjas are, and for whatever reason left. And um, so this is like, you know, a really good grudge match, Ninja versus Ninja, except, you know, uh, Raizo actually has a devil fruit to his system. Um, I don't know. We can see maybe Foku Rokujo pull some strings, something out of his hat that we haven't seen. So I'm really interested to see a full on uh, one piece ninja fight and what that entails. Um, I love the line about how um, Raizo is just like you have a lot of loyalty to a... Uh, um, to a dead man and he says i could say the same about you which is super true and in a way um that's another just kind of comparison where technically orochi is alive therefore his will is alive and even the even though odin is dead odin's will is still alive so i really i really like that i really think that's pretty cool um moving on we get back to the rooftop and i i'm gonna say this every time i'm just so happy that like uh Oda isn't going to, like, pull our leg on this, isn't going to, you know, kind of, like, drag his feet with this. Like, nah, we're getting this fight. Because, especially, I said this before, when uh, Luffy ran out of hockey, I was like, oh, I really hope, you know, we don't go multiple chapters uh, without, like, the rooftop fight while Luffy's recovering or Luffy's not in it. But, like, within only a few, a handful of chapters, Luffy, uh, Luffy's back at it. And that is my dude. So, anyway, we're at the roof, and Kaido and... Big Mom do the unthinkable. And the reason I say I do the unthinkable is like, yes, they have good teamwork, but I did not really see this move coming. They both combine and pretty much do a, um, what's it called? The uh, Elbaf attack, um, Sovereign, the uh, the Sovereign King slash Spear of Elbaf attack. But um, the version I read is called um, Ocean Sovereignty. Um, I'm sure the official release might have something uh, slightly different. But, oh my god, a simultaneous combo attack from two Yonko. And it looked like they pulled no punches in that and sent it out. Incredible. Even more incredible than that is not, not just a combination of all of them. Zoro immediately gets in front of the blast and tanks it. I'm sorry, bruh, but like... Zoro is getting feet on feet on feet. He can just boom, boom, boom. Put that right on the put that right on the resume, bro. Put that right on the. Why should we hire you, Bruh, Did you see me block two Yonko attacks? That's why you should hire me. Why are we even here, bro? Luffy can pick them. That is the greatest first mate ever. I know Rod Silvers exists. I'm hyping my dude, but we can we really can't sleep on how impressive that was does zoro get fucked up yes but he's not down and out yeah he's winded but like for him to take that attack and while he was taking that attack by the way he he was even talking which you know we're we're used to zoro being able to talk while um holding his swords but like the fact that he while blocking says you know we can't let them wipe us out like he He's serious when it comes, like, you know, we're used to the Straw Hats being goofy and then serious in these fights, but they're really strategically intelligent and um, just uh, fighting-wise. Just like Goku and um, certain other, um, you know, protagonists, when it comes to fighting, they're geniuses, and, like, I just really love this part. Um, they basically, you know, say what they said last chapter, which is basically that, hey, we need to split these guys up. Um, they answered a big question that a lot of us have had for the longest time, and that's like, hey, Law, can't you just poof, poof them away? And I'm glad this was brought up. This is something really important because basically we're told that their hockey is too great, which is explains so much of the Devil Fruit limitations, and maybe I'll do a video on that later, but I'm glad we finally get like something definitively saying that because you think about like, why can't why can't uh you know law just swap swap big mom and uh, and kaido's like hearts or heads or like do shambles and all these other things that he's just so casually done to others and it that's why hockey plays into it that's why roger even though to our knowledge didn't have a devil fruit was so powerful because in the face of hockey hockey trumps all and that's why i personally love hockey a lot of people hate it Yada yada yada. I think this series could not really have worked without hockey. Some people thought, um, think 
you know, you could have gone back to when Luffy was super creative and there's always a counter for certain things. But I'm like, it would have gotten too complicated, it would have been co- co- gotten too convoluted. Some of these powers are too outlandish and too ridiculous to just outmaneuver. So hockey is an essential force. You don't have to agree. That is just how I feel about the matter. Um, still don't really like Kaido's hybrid form. Um, but you know, it's effective from what, from what I'm seeing, it basically is just his base form with the added scale protection from, um, the dragon scales with the increased versatility with his tail and then the access to all his dragon abilities. As we see him, um, later on in this chapter, use a, uh, fire blast. So basically it's a condensed version. It, um, it's, it's just a souped up version of his base form with all the abilities of his um, dragon form without some of the hangbacks, like for example, the great size. Don't get me wrong, great size is such a good factor for intimidation, but when someone can hurt you in that great size, all it is is a real liability towards you, if you get what I'm saying. Anyway, what happens next? Oh, this part, super clutch, really liked it a lot. Um, while everyone is recovering from the ocean sovereignty, literally everyone is like, when that was a destructive attack, you know, they're a little bit shook, a little bit shaken. Everyone's like, where's Luffy? And while everyone else is still like recovering, getting their bearings, my boy Luffy, like the badass motherfucker he is, charges right headfirst into Kaido, ready to hit him with a red hawk. Unfortunately, Kaido dodges. Now, at first, I didn't think anything of it. Then I see the panel of Luffy smiling, and then he's like, you had to dodge that, didn't you? And it makes perfect sense. So, I could be wrong here, but to my knowledge, this is the first time Kaido has dodged one of Luffy's attacks. One of Luffy's attacks. I know he, um, to this day, there's still speculation whether he dodged or um, Zoro missed the one slash. I'm going with Zoro missed. Anyway... Before, he's just tanked them. And before, I think it was kind of a flex, a show of power, like, hey, you know, um, I'm your, your punches mean, it's a combination of your punches mean nothing, and also, I'm just super tanky. But as the chapters have progressed, slowly but surely, Luffy has been hurting him and hurting him. We've seen damage taken on Kaido. Now, as of right now, they look relatively, you know, fresh and clean. But, um, you know, Kaido realizes really easily that this isn't something he can keep going with. And I'm just curious if he still has, like, the durability he has in his hybrid form. Or maybe he just acknowledges that he can't take too many hits from Luffy. But this is super awesome. This is basically a way of telling us that, hey, you know, if we can keep going, we got this. Obviously... Kaido ain't no slouch, Kaido ain't no bitch, immediately retorts with his, um, what's it called, a bancho, his little club, hits, um, hits Luffy, sends him flying, but, you know, that's our boy Luffy, he's never gonna give up, um, the part I was talking about where he uses his, uh, fire breath from hybrid form occurs right after, and then immediately after that, he uses, um, a move called Three Realms, Ragnarok, um, we're getting back into the Viking themes here, um, I, uh, so that's really, really cool, I think we've seen Viking themes with both Shanks and with Roger, so um, really, really interesting. Now, here is where the chapter starts to get super crazy. Okay, um, they decide we're gonna sm- we're gonna fight smarter, not harder. And so, what ends up happening is um, Kid uses a con- uh, make uses his abilities to make basically a prison metal cage for. Uh, Zeus. Like I said earlier, I thought he would put himself in kind of a Faraday cage situation where he was touching the ground and fought against uh, Big Mom and Zeus and just let the uh, electricity channel into the ground. They they went a different way with it. They created a little prison for Zeus and then they used Lost Shambles to trap Zeus in it. Boom, one homie out the way. Then we got Zoro comes up, ska, 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 fucking slices um, Prometheus into a bunch of tiny pieces and he obviously uses hockey that way prometheus cannot reform so boom prometheus is out the way and then on top of that we have killer who takes um takes on um napoleon which was kind of funny because it didn't look like he really did much to napoleon but like kind of scare him away but long story short we got all three of big mom's homies out the way now at the end of the day big mom is still a massive threat which she quickly reminds them of but that was also part of her plan because yes 
getting rid of the homies is good. It doesn't really nerf her. Um, I would like to compare it in a video game where you're fighting a boss, but the boss spawns little minions, and you have the choice whether or not you want to get rid of the minions and focus on the boss, or just try to, you know, focus on the boss and just, like, deal with the minions, and, like, you guys, if you're a gamer, you know, it honestly is up to choice or how annoying the minions are or how annoying the boss is, but so they decided we're going to get rid of the minions so we can focus on the boss, they trick Big Mom into launching an attack at them, and then um, they immediately knock her off the rooftop where the water is waiting below them. So basically, they pretty much KO'd her. Now, obviously, something's going to happen. She doesn't have the ability to fly without Zeus. So that is major. So I'm wondering how she's going to get out of this. Um, I would love to see her as a Yonko get out of this with her own powers and abilities. But, um, you know, there's there's subject for many things to happen. Um, uh, Perospera could show up, even though last time I was um, aware of him, he was heading to the um, the hall where Queen and the rest of them were fighting. So I don't think he's there. Um, so, yeah, that's honestly a really, really good question. What's going to happen? Obviously, it's not going to be that easy. What best case scenario, even though if it doesn't defeat her, it keeps her out the fight long enough for them to kind of 1v5 Kaido until she gets back. So that's really awesome for them. That's really smart. I hope that happens. I don't think it'll be that easy. I think we'll see, you know, some Yonko level feats here. Uh, speaking of people we haven't seen before, like I mentioned with Perospero, where is Sanji? He was deciding whether or not to go meet up in the one spot where uh, Perospero was or to go um, help the scabbers, and he's at neither place currently he could still be on his way we don't know so do not forget that sanji is heavily involved in this as well and we are just currently waiting for his update we are also still waiting to see all the fights of the straw hats so honestly i'm hype just everything keeps getting better and better and better and yeah man it, it's just been a phenomenal series like since a thousand hit since 9,000, since 999 hit, it has just been an upward tick. There have been some stagnant chapters, but they're not really stagnant. They just help um, compound the things to come next. There's no break next week. So I'm just super happy to get right into it. Um, before I exit out of this video, something I want to talk about is I watched um, a video by um, a YouTuber who goes by Sawyer7. And something he said completely blew my mind. So you guys know about Zunisha and how Momo could control Zunisha and all these things. Um, basically, what he was saying was he believes Zunisha is on his way to Wano. Maybe that maybe that um, that place he's been wandering to all along has been Wano. I'm surprised he hasn't been there yet. Maybe he couldn't find it. Maybe he couldn't reach it. But with how high Wano is and how tall Zunisha is, it could you know factor in that like he could easily assist them. Um, he was saying that the place is on fire. We've seen Zunisha use his trunk to um, to bathe himself. So Zunisha, by that same merit, could use his trunk to put out the fire going on in um, on Wano right now. Um, he could somehow help. Obviously, you know, Zunisha has beef with Jack from earlier when Jack tried to take him out. So he could attack. Momo's there. Momo could command Zunisha. Maybe Zunisha's whole purpose is to serve Momo. To this day, I'm still trying to figure out what it is that Zunisha did that condemned him to have to walk and carry Zo on it. Um, Zo on its back. Um, on his back, as well as who was powerful enough to do that? Because like, this is totally a Madara, uh, Jinchuriki situation where you know basically Zunisha was uh Mingekyu'd into uh obedience, and so I really want to learn about that, but. That does make a lot of sense plot logistic wise for Zunisha to show up, have um have a plan. We're seeing Momo use his um use his um voice um voice of all uh voice of all things. Oh by the way, someone earlier said uh can hear the voice and it was in parentheses and I don't know if that was intentional or not. So I really do think by the end of this arc we're gonna get a lot more information on the um voice of all things. Um, Zunisha is possibly a good go. Something that Sawyer 7 didn't mention that I decided to add was, you know, we have this flying capital, right? Um, what's going to happen if it crashes down? So my original theory was, you know, well, I, I don't know if I ever gave you guys a theory, but, you know, with Momo and his powers, maybe Momo would have to hold up 
Um, actually, I think I think Sawyer Seven did say this. I think Sawyer Seven did say this. I might be stealing his theory, but it's a cool theory nonetheless. Basically, you remember how Odin was in the pot and held up the scabbards to protect them. Momo is going to do an even greater feat by holding up the entire island and protecting them. Um, something that could tie into that or be completely separate is maybe Zo comes and maybe um, we've been told we've been told that the minks aren't meant to live on Zo forever. There's going to be a time where they have to leave. Maybe, maybe they're going to leave and join Wano. We know that the Minx and the people of Wano have been, you know, in a relationship for centuries, right? So maybe it's a part of, uh, you know, ending the isolationism for them to join hands with the Minx. Um, and they, not only will they get reinforcements, but they'll get, um, you know, protection. And then the new capital will be on the back of Zunisha. And maybe we'll learn more about why Wano was called uh, the Gold City. So theories, theories abound here. Um, I still want, I was still wanted Otama, um, Otama, the one, the one weird girl, um, weird girl is not Toki, uh, the one who ate, um, who has the smile fruit. I forget her name. I apologize. And Momo to do more. Um, there was a theory earlier about how Jewelry Bonnie could show up, age them up. And then Basil Hawkins could use his divination powers to essentially, um, you know, bring out the potential. Like if you guys have seen Hunter x Hunter pull out their potential, they would have at that age. I thought that was a super cool theory. The more we go into the chapter, the less likely I think that's going to occur. But it would be so cool. Anyway, that's all I really have to say. Um, if you guys have any thoughts or questions, please leave them in the um, comment section below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It means the world to me and i appreciate any any and everyone that, have been, that has been supporting me and constantly watching these videos even if it's only two three four five of you you guys are taking time out of your day to watch me and i cannot express how much i appreciate that you guys can see i'm taking this rather seriously switched up the lens on my camera getting some lights i'm trying to do this a lot better and so thank you guys for supporting me every step of the way this has been otaku talk and i'm your host od take care